Scientists have been arguing for some time that COVID-19 is airborne. That opinion now has backing from the WHO and the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. They say the coronavirus can be inhaled even when one is more than a meter away from someone who is infected. For better protection, scientists say ventilation systems need to be overhauled for indoor environments like offices. Well, for a closer look, we're joined now by Dr. Kristen Coleman from the Duke NUS Medical School. Dr. Coleman, how does this change how we protect ourselves when we're out and about? Hi, thanks for having me. I first want to say that uh, transmission is still high. The risk of transmission is still highest when you are close to an infectious person. Um, so the the physical distancing doesn't change. That's still very important. Um, and all of the other measures that are mandated by the Singapore government stand. So you should still continue wearing your mask, but you should keep in mind that the primary way that this virus is transmitted is through is through the inhalation of aerosols, which are tiny particles floating in the air. So it's very important that your mask is well fitted. If you want some extra protection, what you can do is you can double mask. So you can wear a, a cloth mask over top of a face mask. Now that's not absolutely necessary uh, because the, the transmission rate in the community in Singapore is relatively low. Um, but if you want that added layer of protection, that's one way that you can get it. Um, and keep in mind that when you are out and about, this virus can transmit at longer distances than one meter. Uh, so keep that in mind when you are when you're wearing your mask. And Dr. Coleman, masks aside, what sort of changes should we be making to indoor ventilation systems? So uh, indoor ventilation systems need a lot of work. Uh, we need to be focusing on bringing in a higher amount of outdoor air into indoor environments. And a lot of buildings, they, they rely on the recirculation of air. So what needs to be done in the, that situation is that we need to make sure that we are filtering that air such that it is clean before it reaches the breathing zone of occupants. Um, and one way to do that is through HEPA filtration. Uh, so a lot, of, a lot of work needs to be focused on uh, the indoor air quality and it needs to really focus on uh, reducing the risk of transmitting infectious viruses and other pathogens. Dr. Coleman, we're well into a year, past a year for this pandemic. Why has it taken this long for the WHO and for the US CDC to accept what some scientists have been saying all along about this virus? So there's a lot of disagreement between fields um, and uh, a lot of the resistance from the World Health Organization and the United States Centers for Disease Control and Prevention uh, was based off of uh, quite frankly, outdated science. Um, they, they were stuck on this idea that the primary mode of, of transmission for respiratory viruses is through large ballistic droplets that spray from a person's cough or sneeze onto surfaces or onto somebody else's face. Uh, but modern aerosol scientists, uh, science will, will tell us that that's actually not the case. Uh, the close range transmission is actually dominated by the inhalation of small aerosols that are produced when somebody is simply breathing, talking, or even singing. Dr. Coleman, thank you very much for your time. That was Dr. Kristen Coleman at the Duke NUS Medical School.